something exciting happened this week here at the farm and I'm going to show you. Hey, good morning. Um, I'm down here feeding the calves. Actually, Noelle is, she's four months old, so I'm working on weaning her. And the last two days have been a bit rough. I switched her to only evening bottles. Figured she'd sleep better at night having that warm milk in her tummy. But it means that it's a bit of a runaround in the mornings. She and Clover are used to coming up together and course Noelle's big so her trying to chase me down to get milk is uh, quite a trip. I need to train her to be tied off but for the time being I try to get her in the barn and then just shut her in there and then I can feed Clover. Hey Clover. Hey girls. See how much bigger Noelle is. Like I said she's four months old Plus, let's see, she was four months old on the 24th. She was a middle of the night, Christmas Eve, Christmas baby. Hence the name Noelle. And Clover, she is two months old now. And she's doing really good. She was a surprise calf. And her mama, when she was first born, we thought that she would come up to feed and then it turned out she wouldn't come up to feed at all. So we ended up pulling her off, besides the fact that crazy ladies just crazy. So we want Clover to be gentle and not crazy. So far, so good. So we've been busy this last week. That's why we haven't posted any videos here on YouTube. Um, Nathan was home for a few days, so we had, um, I guess you call it a spring break. Uh, he had a few days off from work, which never ever happens. He's able to take a few days off vacation wise. <clears throat> then we spent some family time. We went to Silver Dollar City and, and did all sorts of stuff like that and just had a good time. Um, nothing YouTube documenting worthy, um, but yeah, we just, just relaxed, had a good time. And um, now we're back into the swing of things. Nathan's working and I'm working here. We have um, a few weeks of school assignments left to do with kids. And then we'll be on summer break. And of course, I get the itch to be on summer break about April every year. Um, that has to do with the change in the weather and wanting to garden and things like that. But it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I deal with it and we do school and I run outside and I do stuff um, on the days that it's not raining. You can see today it's real overcast. It's cool out. I need to work on the garden building those um, surface raised beds. So I'll have to put more clothes on so I won't get cold. The benefit is though the tractor you're sitting right kind of behind the engine. So I actually have a little bit of that bleed over heat from the engine. So it's not too bad, um, but you know, up in the air, you, you're getting blown in the wind. But I've been rotating these girls through this portion of the hay field. The purpose is pretty much from this area all the way down to the bottom by the driveway grows a really heavy crop of Johnson grass. And you can see down here, that's what this is. This is all Johnson grass. Nathan bush hogged it. Last summer, it was just out of control. Um, usually the Johnson grass comes up after haying. And then of course, you know, the cows can eat it until it gets hit with frost. So we give them a good graze on this. You can see the, the main part of the hay field is getting pretty tall. We'll be looking for uh, somebody to do custom haying for us this year. 
with having this many cows, we'll probably need to have all the, the hay that we bale. So we'll need to get that lined up sooner rather than later. But they're doing a good job. I mow the edge here just to keep it neat next to the driveway. Um, obviously not run the fence next to the driveway because of driving the car. But then when I move them, so this was all chunky. Um, they, they do a pretty good job of eating somewhat evenly. You can see this is what this looks like. So you can see that line to that gate. This was kind of an overlap section um, for the purpose of being able to get um, Noel in the barn. I left it that way. And then over here you can see where it's, it's new grass and they've been on this two days now. And then when it gets to about this stage, oh, about half eaten. The, these calves aren't super thorough compared to the big cows. But once they kind of have an even distribution of manure, you know, they don't want to eat around cow pies. Like they won't touch anywhere around that grass. So once they get those cow pies spread out, then I move them to a new section. And then I actually mowed this yesterday. And I'm mowing it one section at a time as I move them off. And it does a little bit of running over the cow pies. You can see some of them are kind of flattened out with a tire print in them. Um, I need to get a drag to drag through the field. But down here you can see where they have previously been. This was mowed just like the upper area. And you can see that it has already grown basically twice the height of what I mowed it down to. I mowed it down to about four inches tall and it's already in in places eight inches. Some places the grass doesn't grow as fast because of the species but um, I will move them up and over the hill. Part of the reason we mowed this besides making it evenly the same height let's see if I can find some. We have what around here is called onion grass it's a wild onion and this whole hillside through this hay field is absolutely covered in in onion grass and obviously the cows don't eat onion grass or at least not very well so if I can keep that mowed down hopefully it won't go to seed um, it's gonna try you can see there's a seed head right there so I don't know it's a bit it's it's everywhere honestly i've i've lived here a long time on this particular property and i've never seen this much onion grass ever i can't remember if i told you before but the day that i moved these cows into their second section crazy lady jumped the fence and you can see her She's the second cow from the right, the one with no tags. I can't get her in. Can't get her separated from the other cows. So it is what it is, I guess. And we'll harvest her here in the next couple of months. There's not much else we can do about it. If I can't get her separated before she gets bred, she'll be early bred when she goes to the harvest. Um, not ideal, not what we would want to do, but so little Nicky, he's weaned. He's like three weeks older than Noel, maybe two and a half weeks. And so he's out here with the big cows. He's too small to breed the girls. Um, the bull we have is young, so he's not pushing him around. Actually, Clementine is the one that pushes Nicky around. I wanted to show you the difference of their grazing area. So we did the same thing that we did in the hay field, except this is this area over here has not been mowed. That is actually just them grazing it. It got a little overgrazed because we were gone for a couple of days. But then when we got home, I moved them up to this section and they're doing a good job grazing it down. And they seem to graze it down pretty evenly as long as they're in a small enough space, just like the little girls. They need to have that small space so they evenly distribute the manure and graze it down well. So when 
When I'm done moving them from here, they'll go up into this next little section and then they'll actually move up and out of this particular paddock and I'll rotate them around and I'll take you on that uh, rotation with me. And so far they, they look really, really good. Um, like I said, they've been to the vet, got their, their spring shots, I guess you'd say, um, dewormed. That was the, the most critical was making sure that they were dewormed. They had not been wormed since we got them. Um, we got them from a guy that's nearby us, not super close. Um, unfortunately, Annabelle was pretty worm laden when we got her. So I wanted to make sure, you know, that these girls were dewormed and ready to go out on pasture. Crazy Lady looks a little bit rough. She ended up with the worst of the winter lice. Um, and she's not shedding out quite as fast as the other girls are. But you can see our bull here. He looks pretty nice. Um, different, different facial features, different genetics than the girls have, but, um, hopefully he throws some nice babies. We still don't know if Callie and Carolina are already previously bred. We'll see. They would be due in June and early October, if that's the case, but we'll find out. And look what we have here. Five beautiful American guinea hog babies. And little Penny over there, she's due. She was sitting here looking at Poppy like, I want my babies out. She's a good mama. This is Poppy. And Poppy is actually Penny's mama. They're doing good. They're growing well. See all those little wrinkles? That's him getting all chubby. We've got three boys and two girls so far. Um, that's what's in this litter, and we'll find out what we got on that second litter when she finally pops. She does look like she's due any time. Her milk line is filled out, and usually when that happens, it's just a matter of time. I do need to still set up their automatic water. You can see the hoses set in here. Um, that needs to be moved over here, closer. Um, this year I don't have a shelter set up over that water and the hoses in the sunshine get really hot. Or I should say the water in the hoses gets really hot. So um, the water tank over here, because it has the, the mass of the water, it doesn't get hot. But the little tiny hoses, they just sit in the sun and become uh, water heaters, solar water heaters. So um, the last few feet have to be in the shade or the water's not super drinkable. I have the same water issue over here with the boys. I have this water sled. It's portable. I can tow it. You can see that there's loops on it. Um, unfortunately, I did find, like I said, the hose in the sun, that pipe in the sun, it gets hot. The water inside of it gets hot. And so I really need to run a hose up through the woods and then that, that water actually works great. Um, even just shading the last few feet of the hose makes it a lot cooler. right there. You put lots of babies in there, huh? Lots of babies in there. Lots of babies. There's a baby right there. That's amazing. A lot of times you can't feel the babies, but she's sure full of them. We'll see. Her sister had eight babies last year. Um, she did well feeding them. Um, unfortunately, um, her sister ended up with like weak ankles and um, so we chose not to keep her as a breeder 
and um, just is what it is. You um, have to select, and that was that's something that I wouldn't have known would be the case um, without having kept her to breed her. So we didn't keep her, any of her babies or her. She's actually over there waiting to go to freezer camp. Um, as you can see. Look how big pregnant she is. Let's see. She's miserable. But this is what I was talking about. You can see that her milk line is filling up. She doesn't have any milk yet, but um, soon. All of these girls love belly rubs. Don't you, Penny? It's like, get these things out of me. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hopefully, next time I will have more of the garden built. We're kind of crunch time now. Um, technically, Mother's Day is when we can plant. So we're kind of in the home stretch and I need to get all of these garden beds built. Uh, my baby plants are getting bigger. Um, definitely started them a little bit late, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm not ready either.